By the immense grace of His Holiness, Sri Sri Mulidhar Swamiji and our beloved Yugala Murti, Madhuri Saki and Premika Varadhan, who are none other than Radha Rani and Lord Krishna, today we're here to discuss about an important topic, Guru Seva. My name is Pranavida and with me are Badri Nagarajan and Sanjit Gopinath. We're all high school students and today we're going to be answering some of the key questions that other teens and adults have about Guru Seva. Firstly, what even is Guru Seva and how is it different from these other worldly activities that we do every day? But to understand this, we must first understand what even constitutes a worldly activity. For this, let's turn to Sanjit. Sure. So worldly activity forces us into particular routines, monotonous chores that become mundane prototypes. These, these like worldly activities are often driven by superficial ambitions for wealth, power, fame, or charm, right? And are intricately connected with one's natural ambition for like self goals, motivation, and aspirations, right? But the thing is, these things will only they will inherently cause you stress and restlessness in your daily lives, right? And therefore, the enthusiasm you gain from worldly activities can only be temporary. Now let's ask Badri the same question. So when you do worldly activities out of unfamiliarity or temporary attraction, for example, when you are attracted to any electronics or any new clothes in a market, your actions are going to be driven by peer pressure to impress or emphasize social status. And this whirlpool of desire has no end. And this can cause a lack of enthusiasm and boredom can settle in it. And what will happen is when you do worldly things out of comfort or familiarity, there will be no excitement happiness or spirit to it but the enthusiasm in worldly things is either way short-lived that was a great summary of what constitutes worldly activities now let's move back to the actual question why is guru seva different from these worldly activities let's start with badri this time so the first step to understanding the difference is um, by understanding that that seva is bestowed upon us but throughout the Guru um, rather than by us. Um, the Guru is absolute and he doesn't need hands in order, in order to fulfill his purpose of incarnation. Um, but by his immense of grace, um, by his immense grace, um, we, have, we have his hands to fulfill our purpose. And the first step is by feeling the blessing. And if we feel that first step, then the other steps will follow all along. Now let's ask Sanjit the same question. So as both you mentioned, which I think you did a really good job explaining it, right? When we truly grasp the idea that um, a guru uh, with his boundless compassion is uh, offering us the opportunity to do his seva for him, then I think negative emotions such as greed, jealousy, or insecurities, um, gr like grumpiness, whining, they all vanish and they're replaced by a deep profound sense of inner peace and calm and that enables us to be like a completely flexible instrument for our master, right? And another thing in addition to that is it's also the origin of creativity in life because when one is preoccupied with life and just like going with the flow or too too busy trying to impress others like many are nowadays or too tense and just too ambitious right then we lose that sense of creativity that is naturally instilled with them within us by with our divine purpose so we need to resonate with our divinity to be truly creative so uh, to summarize this as a great mahan once said right if we are crawling through something, it is an activity. However, if we are dancing through something, it is seva. Those are great summaries by Badri and Sanjit. And I completely agree with them. Seva often surpasses these emotions or feelings that we have when we do normal activities. It just has this eternal freshness to it. The deeper you go in seva, 
the more appeal and profoundness there is to it. In seva, there's often comfort, familiarity, or even enthusiasm. But also in seva, there's never this tiredness or even boredom, because seva always keeps you, keeps you on your toes. Sometimes when we do these otherworldly activities, when we have seva as the final purpose instead, then it can also give us the same zeal. Now you may be wondering, um, can just normal teens like you and I do Guru Seva? You might ask, what's the minimum age that you can start Guru Seva in? And these are all valid questions. Some people might even ask, uh, what are like for guidance to start when they're starting to approach Guru Seva? So let's try to Sanjit for his thoughts about these questions. So, as all Mahans will tell you, the earlier you start Guru Seva, the better. There's no particular age to start Guru Seva, right? But an important thing is to be in attendance uh, during um, Guru, Guruji satsangs and holy rituals so you gain an understanding of what you're trying to serve, right? That's very important. So, and also you need to, like there are in local cities, we also offer programs such as Gopaktiram, right? And um, all three of us are actually enrolled in those programs. So highly recommend those, right? But so on a serious note, these things are like the only way and the most optimal way indeed to begin a, a lifetime of Guru Seva. And once we start these, even though it might seem like a monumental task, right? To like devote your lifetime to something, it becomes much easier when, because Gurudev will give, bless you with opportunities along the way, actually. So that's how, yeah. So as Sanjit mentioned, uh, there are many resources um, out there and there are also many YouTube channels such as Navadwar e Satsang. Um, and these, these YouTube channels um, offer um, a lot of questions from teens and kids and they also offer beautiful answers from Guruji's senior disciples as well. Thank you Badri and Sanjit for mentioning all these resources that people can start accessing Guru Seva from. By His grace and the forms that we discussed earlier, Guru Seva is often approachable by uh, many people in our communities. Um, there's like, we also automatically avoid falling into the trap of these otherworldly activities when we're doing Guru Seva. I think that um, this teenage age is an age where we're most vulnerable to fall in such traps. So we humbly request all our viewers to pray to his feet and pray for his grace um, in attaining Guru Seva. We now leave you with a beautiful saying. If there's an activity that can liberate you or unshackle you, then that is Guru Seva. Sadguru Nath Maharaj Ki Jai Radhe Radhe